that's not going to work. It ain't no way that's going to work. I ain't never seen nobody do nothing like that before. I mean, I hear you, but what makes you think you can accomplish something like that? You know where you grew up. Ain't nobody ever did nothing like, like that where you was from. Right, right. So I've been watching the news, and man, I don't even see how that's going to work. I mean, they ain't going to give nobody like you a chance ever. So, man, you better stick to what's realistic. <laughs> what would make you believe something like that? That book is over 6,000 years old. It was created by folks who don't even look like you. Man, you better get real. She did what? <laughs> oh, no, man. <laughs> if I was you, I'd get up out of there quick because gonna, she going to start playing you. Man, you always quick to forgive somebody. You're going to have to start looking out for yourself, Mr. Number One. You're going to have to start taking care of yourself because ain't nobody going to look out for you. I am sure you, just like myself, have uttered some of those phrases and or those words to some friends, cousins, or folks that we know. So that's why this morning I want you to stay tuned as we explore Philippians, the first chapter, verses 19 through 30, where the Apostle Paul is writing to his church at Philippi, and he is trying to relay to them, to convince them that they can and should maintain a proper attitude as they go through their life. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Minister Wallace and welcome to the New Life Bible Church YouTube channel. Uh, it is a fantastic Sunday morning. At least I'm anticipating that because this is actually Saturday when I'm recording this. Uh, but the weather says it's going to be fantastic. And if it looks like anything like it looks right now, it is a fantastic time of year here in North Carolina. I don't know what time of year you, you are listening to this, but today is October the 21st. This will premiere on October the 22nd. Uh, and it is a beautiful 70 some odd degree day here in North Carolina. Again, my name is Minister Wallace. I'm coming to you from uh, the, New, the uh, <laughs> New Life Bible Church YouTube channel. Uh, we thank God for, for, for you. I thank God for you tuning in. Uh, and on behalf of my pastor, the pastor of New Life Bible Church, Pastor Alan S. McLaughlin and his wife, our first lady, Dr. Norma McLaughlin, uh, we welcome you to the channel. If you're in the area, look, if you're in the area, if you're in the Fort Liberty, a.k.a. Fort Bragg area, uh, we would ask that you drop by. We're at 1420 Hoke Loop Road. Uh, we have services at the time of this broadcast, October 21st, 2023. We have services, uh, live and in-person services at 1030 Sunday mornings. And we also have streaming services at 830, which is most likely the reason why you are watching this one. So you have seen the introduction. You have seen the interlude, the prelude, uh, maintaining the proper attitude. Look, it's incumbent on us. I want to leave you with one thought, one thought this morning, one thought, or this evening, or this afternoon, one thought that we need to, as believers, understand that there is a key to maintaining a proper attitude. And a spoiler alert, that key is Jesus Christ. You've heard some of the phrases and the things that were mentioned uh, in the introduction of this. Uh, these things typically come from folks who have a bad attitude or a bad outlook on life. Bad attitude, bad outlook on life are synonymous with each other. The thing is, man, this can be destructive. This, this can be physically destructive. It can cause mood swings. It, it can cause us to have low self-esteem. Uh, it can cause us to hold on to past experiences. It can cause us to be very afraid to do anything new. I'm talking anything. Uh, it can cause us to be constantly annoyed, frustrated. It can cause medical conditions like depression, ulcers, stomach problems. Th having a bad attitude is mentally and physically debilitating. We, we as believers, we have the key or we have a key. It's the key if you are using it. It's a key if you just have it on your keychain and you are not using it. Nevertheless, it is a key. So I know for me, for me personally, 
I struggle with it at times. I struggle with it at times maintaining the right attitude or maintaining a proper attitude. What does that mean? Well, I can tell you what it does not mean. It does not mean, oh, well, you just stick your head in the sand. Oh, well, you just ain't keeping it real. Uh, oh, well, you, you just, no. That, that, <laughs> you can absolutely be well-tuned to what's going on. You can absolutely have your head above the sand. And yet, as a Christian, as a believer, you can absolutely still maintain a right attitude. I know for you too, you have found yourself in those situations. I know you too, you find yourself struggling with maintaining a proper attitude. So we need to remember this. One idea you're going to leave here with, or one idea I'm going to present you with over and over and over for the next 12 to 13 minutes in multiple situations that should drive home one point, one idea, one point, that through Christ, you can do all the above that we talked about, all the above in having and maintaining a proper attitude. The key to maintaining that proper attitude is Jesus Christ. The key to maintaining a proper attitude is Jesus Christ. Now, in there, maintaining a proper attitude is Jesus Christ and applying what his word says. So we have to focus on whose we are as Christians. We need this. We need this. We absolutely need this today. We needed it yesterday. We need this going forward in life. We need to know that it. we have the ability to maintain a proper attitude. Why? Because our attitude, you've heard this before, but it's fact, it, it's true. Because our attitude determines our altitude. It absolutely does in terms of the things that we can and could or sustain doing. Our attitude determines our alt, alt, altitude. If, if, you have a, if you have a bad attitude on life and you've rewritten it to call it, I keep it real, you are maintaining a low, a pilot would say, a dangerous altitude in life. Any trees that pop up on your flight path, you're going to smash into them and crash. You, you call it keeping it real, but you have lowered yourself and your standards to the bottom. So that, so that one, honestly, so you're not ever hurt, but, but as you're hovering that low to the ground, you are going to crash. Your attitude determines your altitude. Those of us or those in you who try, and it doesn't mean we're perfect, but those of us and those of you who try to maintain a proper attitude through applying Christ's word, yes, you are at a much higher altitude in life. Are things going to smash into you? Yes, but you have a lot more altitude between you and the ground. You may drop two or three hundred feet, but you're not going to crash. You will be able to recover because you are maintaining the proper attitude. In Philippians, the first chapter, 19 through 30, Paul has, there are three situations uh, 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 three situations that Paul is going to give them, and he is talking about one point, maintaining the proper attitude, because he knows he's writing to his church. The church at Philippi was one of the ones that Paul founded, so he's writing to his church. Now, when Paul is talking about talking to his church, he's talking to the people. You are the church. So when I say church in this sermon, because Paul used the word, uses it, He's writing to the church. Typically, we believe they read these letters aloud. Most times it wasn't a church building, but it was the church, a collection of believers, just like you, if you are a believer. So the church is synonymous with you. You are the church. You are, you make up the church. So Paul was writing to them to tell them, hey, look, having the proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target. Having the proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target. Then he proceeds to give them three different situations in verses 19 through 30 to show that having the proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target. So you could take church out of there, put, put it in your hand and say, having the proper attitude will keep William on task and on target. 
Having the proper attitude will keep Mike on task and on target. Having the proper attitude will keep Tracy on task and on target. You could just say that with your own name, whatever your name is, but the bottom line is having the proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target. Let's pray. Our Father, child in heaven, we thank you, God, for all the blessings. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. In your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the first one, the, the, the first situation that Paul gives, it gives an example of, of where having the proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target is in the first two verses. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. The first one is this. The proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target in difficult situations. So having the proper attitude will keep William on task and on target during difficult situations. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 19. It says, but not only that, but not only that, I will also rejoice for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of the Holy Spirit uh, of Jesus Christ, according to my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything but that with all boldness, Christ will even now as always be exalted in my body, whether in life or in death. Paul was writing, uh, he, he, he sort of opens this portion of text saying that not only in this, I will rejoice because he's confident he has the proper attitude. His circumstances, his difficult situation is that he's in jail. He's writing this letter from jail. So he's saying, I know, I know that this situation, this difficult situation, he's writing to his church, he's writing to you, he's saying, I know that this difficult situation will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of Christ. He goes on to say that it's my eager expectation. It's my eager expectation. Keep in mind, this is from jail. He's trying to demonstrate to them having the proper attitude will keep you on task and on target in difficult situations. He says in verse 20, it's my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything. What Paul is saying is, look, he... He, he expects that he will not be put to shame for what he's put his trust in. He's put his trust in Christ. He hopes and expects he will not be put to shame. In other words, to be, to be embarrassed because he found, found out that that wasn't it. No, he said, it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame. But that with all boldness, that with all boldness, Paul has the right attitude. He could have an attitude of, I've been defeated. Paul could have begun to say, it's the system. They got me again. He could have said, I'm wrongly accused. All of those would have been right. He could have said, I keep trying to do right, and I keep getting into situations like, like this. I can do bad all by myself. He could have said many bad attitude things like that, but he didn't because Paul knew having the proper attitude will keep you on task and on target in difficult situations. Look, you and I, the next time that you find yourself in a difficult situation, remember what the Bible says. And I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. What, in what way can you help somebody who's in a difficult situation right now? I want you to ask God that. What way can I help somebody that's in a difficult situation right now? You may ask yourself, I, I don't have, I ain't got time to be asking nobody else in their difficult situation because I got stuff. Not the right attitude. You need to ask God, what can I who can I share with? Who can I help that's in a difficult situation right now? Second question, ask God sincerely, what can I change in my lifestyle that will give me relief in my difficult situation? There's no accident in the order I put those. I want you to first ask God, put me in a position, God, to where I can help somebody else out, even in my difficult situation. That's the right attitude. And then ask God, what do I need to change in my lifestyle right now to assist me in my difficult situation? The next one, the next, the next situation uh, that we can, that maintaining a proper attitude can help us out in continues in verse 21 through 26. Paul says this, well, well the, the point is this, 
The proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target in decision making. Or the proper attitude will keep Tracy on task and on target in decision making. Or the proper attitude will keep Robert on task and on target in decision making. Listen to what the Bible says. For me to live and to die is gain. Sorry, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Verse 22, but if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which to choose, but I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. So Paul is saying, look, he, he, he's saying, I could be so well, well, I could be selfish at this point. I could have a selfish mindset at this point. Paul is sort of saying, now I'm putting this in, in, in here, but Paul is sort of saying, look, I'm good. I'm saved. I don't need to be, be here. I could just, whatever happens to me in jail happens, I got mine. I'm good. I would rather, matter of fact, I could just give up now and be with Christ and I'm good. But he didn't. He, he, he didn't because that's not the proper attitude that keeps the, the church on task and on target. Listen to verse 24 as he continues. He says, but yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sakes. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that your pride in Christ Jesus may be abundant because of my coming to you again. Saints, believers, you have to know that the Bible is serious when it says put others first. Put others first. Not in the sense of uh, you go wait for somebody else to go to the dog dog before you go. That you wrong, wrong thought process. Putting others first. So the next time you, the next time that I, we struggle in our decision making processes, no matter what that is, I want you to remember, just as Paul is reflecting in the last verse that Jesus Christ is the key to maintaining a proper attitude that keeps us on task and on tar tar target. And then there's two questions I want you to ask yourself in regard, in regard to that decision-making area. I want you to ask, in what way can you trust God more? In what situation in your life that you are having trouble making a decision on, in what way can you trust God more? Because tr trust is implying that you understand, you read and understand what his word says. And then not only do you read and understand what his word says, but then you apply it. That's trust. So in what way? In what thing that you may be struggling with, I need to go left or do I need to go right? In what way can you trust God more? The next thing I want, I want you to ask God, and I want you to be sincere with this. I want you to ask God, what do I need to stop doing so I can make better decisions? What is it that I need to shed, that I need to get rid of? What do I need to stop doing in my life? What action is it? What thought process is it? What person am I with? What, what do I need to stop doing so that I can make better decisions? And when you do that, you will be able to understand fully that the proper attitude keeps us on task and on target when making this in our decision making process. The last and final one, the final situation that Paul gives to the church at Philippi, and, and the last situation I'm going to give to you that, that demonstrates that uh, uh, the, pro the proper attitude keeps the church on task and on tar target. Having the proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target. It comes from verses 27 through 30, which are the last few verses in this portion of text. And the point is this, the proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target as we live our everyday lives. The proper attitude will keep Michael on task and on target as he lives his everyday life. The proper attitude will keep Alan on task and on target as he lives his everyday life. Listen to verses 27 through 30. The Bible says, only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. That's it. We can hear it. shut the camera down, close out, let's pass the plate and let's have a prayer. Uh, that's it. I mean, we're, we're done. We can close out. Finito. That's it. I mean, that sentence alone, 
that summarizes the entire book of Philippians. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. <laughs> Done. But we continue to continue. But that is a fantastic sentence right there. Hence, you can already see why this point is this. The proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target as we live our everyday lives. Opening verse says, only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that whether I come to see you or remain absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit striving with one mind together for the faith of the gospel, united. He's saying, I want, to, I, I want you all to be united. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to the church building. He's talking to the church, Christians, believers. He's talking to the church. I want you to be united. He's not necessarily saying, I want all the Baptists to be united. I want all the denominations to be united. No, Christians, you should be standing firm in one spirit. You should be striving together in one faith. Christians, you shouldn't be the cause of disunity. I'm not talking about it in your church now, and I'm talking about within your church. I'm talking about at your job. You shouldn't be the reason... There's dysfunction in your office. Not you. It could be Mike, who, who, who don't believe in God or whatever, but it shouldn't be you. You shouldn't be the manager who's causing drama at your, your uh, small, small uh, fast food restaurant that you own. You shouldn't be the boss who has employees at each other's throats because you are not appropriately rewarding everybody. It shouldn't be you. It shouldn't be you because you are called to stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Christians, you are called to cause order and at least try to everything that's around you. You're not the one that's late every day at work, upset with the boss because he's calling you out. That's not you, right? Because you are living, trying to live. You're not perfect. I got that but you're striving to, you're striving to you. That's you. Not just on Sunday for two and a half hours. Christ had already told you anybody can do that. The demons can do that. They can sit quietly in church and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then go back out in the world and do whatever. No, no, no. You are called. Sorry, got off on a little sidetrack there, but this is the point that Paul is trying to make. The proper attitude will keep the church on task and on target as you live your everyday lives. Verse 28, it says, and so to go back a little bit, he, he says, uh, so that whether I come to see you or remain absent, I will hear, hear about you, that you're standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and in no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, but salvation for you and this too from God. So listen, listen, listen. Christians, the second you give your opponents, whoever your opponents are, your ops, whatever you want to call them, the second you give your opponents control, that's the same moment that they know, that they know they got you. You don't give your opponents control of your life. You don't let the news cycle dominate you to the point that you become a parrot to everyone else that everything is going downhill. There's no hope. What are we doing? I just need to get mine. What they said, what she said, what a president said, what a politician. If we don't, I, I, I have a friend, close friend of mine at work who is just distraught. We don't have a speaker at a house. What's going to happen? Look. Listen, the Bible says, and in no way be alarmed by your opponents. That's not meaning that you ignore folks, but you are called to a higher authority. You are called to have the right attitude. You are called to have a proper attitude and to not be alarmed by your opponents. The second that your opponents or things that oppose you, the second that you give it traction in your life, and you let it throw you off balance, you have gotten off track. Your attitude will change. Verse 29, it says, 
For to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer on his behalf. Listen, listen, listen. Christianity is different. Christianity is different. You are called to something different. You don't give your life to Christ and then just assimilate yourself back into, I'm going to do whatever it is I was going to do. This is a way of life. This is a faith, but it is a way of life. It has been granted to you for Christ's sakes. It has been granted to you, not only to believe in him, but to suffer on his behalf. Yes, there's going to be strife in your life. Yes, you're going to have opponents. Yes, folks are going to resist you, but you know it's for the better. Listen, when a lifeguard swims out to a swimmer, do you know lifeguards, a lot of their training is in how, how to fight and subdue people who are drowning. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Every lifeguard, every trained lifeguard goes through training of how to fight and subdue somebody who's drowning. But wait, don't folks who drown want to just... But they're fighting. They're fighting for their lives, but they are fighting. A lifeguard swims out to them. If you don't subdue that drowning swimmer, it is a proven fact that that drowning swimmer will drown you too. They are hurting. They will pull you down. Listen, Christians, that's the exact same. That's the exact same. If you swim out to folks and you are not prepared to go with what you know and you start to go with what they, they know, y'all both going to drown. And you have the life preserver. You are swimming out there to punch the hole in the darkness and they, as soon as you come up, they blow your light out. <laughs> you, 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 for to you it has been given for Christ's sakes, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer on his behalf. Experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me, which this is, is Paul, Paul saying, and now here to believe. This is the very reason Paul was writing to the church at Philip, Philippi. Look, the next time, the, 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 the next time where you consider a time, I want you to think about a time or the next time, there is going to be things that you're going to run into within your life. I want you to consider a time that you that you gave in completely to Christ. Because I, I know there were times, it may not have been all the times, but there is a time to where it was just insurmountable. Or you just trusted Christ and you went with, when I say trust Christ, I mean because you have studied God's word, what that means is, is that when you are trying to make a decision, you don't just go, you know, rub your butt. No, it's because of what you've read and you're thinking in your heart, oh, okay, I know the right thing to do. Uh, I know what everybody else is doing. Or here, here's what I feel like the right thing to do. That's trust in Christ. That feeling, that feeling that's based on your study from God's word. It's not you going to go get the Bible. And going, uh, no, it's you reading the Bible, understanding the Bible. And then when these things come, you trust. So I want you to think about a time that you did trust Christ, that, that you did go with what uh, you may have called it with what they do at church, and it worked. I want you to think about those times. I, I, I want you to remember whose you are. I want you to remember what his word said. And then I want you to reiterate in your mind one thought, that the proper attitude keeps the church on task and on target. The proper attitude keeps you on task and on target in difficult decision making, in, in, in difficult situations, and in your everyday lives. The proper attitude will keep you on task and on target. Amen? Amen. I follow what y'all in heaven. We thank you, God, for all the blessings. I thank you, God, for this message. In your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a blessed day.